The Robinson family plays a game of cards in zero gravity aboard a spaceship. They consist of parents John and Maureen and their three children, Judy, Penny, and Will. The air in the room is tense as they appear to be waiting for some kind of impact, but John reminds them that there is no point in worrying since the computer is handling the spaceship. It is revealed that the spacecraft is crash landing on a planet, followed by the burning wreckage of a bigger ship, making the entry procedure incredibly dangerous. The bigger ship crashes into theirs, causing pandemonium inside. After their ship crash lands on the surface, it is revealed that during the chaos, a supply box severely injured Maureen. John rushes to get the family out of the ship, but only manages to open the hatch halfway. It appears to be frozen due to the severely cold weather outside. Will is the only one who manages to squeeze out through this opening. While the rest of the family finds another way out, Will goes exploring and discovers they are in the middle of a tundra and their spaceship has landed in a glacier. He looks up and sees other ships like theirs crashing onto the planet as well. The rest of the family comes out of the ship and wonders what planet they are on. Just then, the ice beneath the ship starts breaking and the ship sinks into the water below in a matter of minutes. The Robinsons are horrified at the sight. A flashback shows John, who is a soldier on deployment, celebrating Christmas with his family through video call. However, he suddenly surprises them and reveals that he is standing right outside. The family is delighted. Just then, an alert goes off on Penny's phone and she turns on the TV. A news report reveals that a celestial object is on a collision course with Earth, and NASA is conducting danger assessments. In the present, Judy examines Maureen's injured leg and points out that the bone is broken. Maureen notices a tear in John's spacesuit. Since he hasn't died, she deduces that the air is breathable and takes off her helmet despite protests from her family. She is proven right and the rest follow suit. Penny fires a flare gun to let the rest of the ships landing on this planet know where they are. Next, the Robinsons start assessing their situation. Will tells Maureen that this planet appears to be halfway between home and the colony that they were heading for. Maureen tells him to not call Earth home because it is not their home anymore. Maureen is confused as to why this planet was not mapped by humans. When it is clearly habitable, it makes no sense. Judy assesses Will's physical health and John says he is fine. Judy sternly reminds him that they are not soldiers under his command. There is clearly tension between the two. Next, John says if the water that their ship is in freezes, they will be left with no resources. He asks Maureen how long before that happens, because he knows she's already done the calculation, being the amazing scientist that she is. Maureen does not want to discuss it in front of the children, but John insists that she tell him. She says that this planet's sun will set in roughly six hours, and after that, the temperature will drop to about minus 60, freezing the water, the power source of the ship, and all of them. Judy says that they cannot get somewhere warmer in that time with Maureen's injured leg, and Maureen tells them to leave her behind. John comes up with another plan. He says that they can use the power cells of the ship to power their suits, which will help them survive, but someone has to dive in to go get them. Since the jammed hatch is the closest entrance, Will has to be the one to pull this off. Maureen objects, saying her calculations aren't precise and the water could freeze earlier. But John insists that Will can do this. Before John can get Will prepared, Judy jumps in. She goes in through the entrance that is farther away and finds the power cell. But just then, the water starts freezing. Judy rushes toward the surface, dropping the power cell to move quicker. But the water freezes around her. Judy's suit keeps her warm and alive, but she only has enough oxygen to survive five hours. Meanwhile, Maureen's broken leg starts getting worse, and she passes out. Next, John starts working on getting Judy out when Will notices white flames in the distance. He realizes that it is magnesium which burns hot in the presence of ice. John has an idea, and he takes Will with him while telling Penny to look after her mother and sister. Penny starts working on breaking the ice, but Judy tells her to read Moby Dick to her. A flashback shows Penny buying a Christmas gift for John, and Maureen is worried that she will be disappointed because John won't make it home due to his soldier duties. Penny says she has a thick skin, and it's the least she can do for her father who is making sacrifices for her and this country. On their expedition, John tries to get to know Will because they haven't spent time together due to John always being deployed. Will blames himself for Judy's situation. 
He says that if he jumped in, she wouldn't be stuck right now. He adds that he feels like he doesn't belong here like the rest of them. John comforts him, but not very adequately, since he is emotionally closed off due to all his army training. Just then, the ground below Will crumbles, and he falls into a long, icy tunnel. Back at the campsite, Maureen reports a funny feeling in her leg, and it is revealed that she has compartment syndrome. Judy, who is trained in medicine and surgery, guides Penny through a procedure to relieve the symptoms. Penny struggles, but manages to go through with it by pretending that her mother's leg is just a piece of steak. Let's hope this isn't a common practice among surgeons. Will wakes up at the end of the tunnel and sees a forest in front of him and the frozen mountain behind him. He makes radio contact with John, and John tells him that he has to take the magnesium back to save Judy, who doesn't have a lot of time left. He tells Will to sit tight and wait. Will is scared, but tells John to go. A flashback shows Will and Judy building a model of a giant space vessel called the Resolute. Judy says that it is crazy to think that in some time, they are going to be on the real thing. Will despairingly says that it will only happen if he passes the test that they've all taken to determine whether they will get to be colonists. If he fails, they will have to leave him behind. Judy tells him that won't happen because the Robinsons stick together. Another flashback shows Maureen arriving in her office and learning that Will did not pass the test and she will have to leave him behind. She pulls some strings through an unknown source and changes the result of Will's application. In the present, Will sees some embers floating in the air and decides to investigate. He arrives at the site of a crash, but notices that the ship is not like the landing ships used by the humans. He realizes that this may be the first sign of alien life. While he is investigating, he hears movement behind him and sees a robotic being. He runs from it and climbs up a tree to avoid it, but the other half of the being, which is conveniently stuck on the tree branch, corners him. Back at the campsite, John burns the magnesium to melt the ice and free Judy. A flashback shows John arriving at his post during his days as a soldier and getting a call from Maureen. It is clear from their tones that their marriage is struggling. She tells him that the kids have been accepted into the colonist program, but she needs him to sign legal custody over to her so she can take them. John is enraged that she wants to take his kids away from him, but she says that this isn't about them, it's about what's best for the kids. Night falls and Will realizes that he is not in danger from the robotic being. He notices that the being appears to be dying. Suddenly, the fire from the crash site starts spreading all over the forest. Meanwhile, at the campsite, John and Maureen are close to freeing Judy, but it starts raining and the temperature drops, refreezing the ice around. They all start panicking. In the forest, Will realizes that he will not make it out, and as a last act, he frees the robot from the branch so it can have a chance to survive. The robot reassembles and proceeds to rescue Will from the forest. Afterward, the robot observes Will and takes a form that resembles humans. Back at the campsite, John, Maureen, and Penny realize that they will not rescue Judy and simply hold her hand as she breathes her final breaths. Just then, Will arrives with the robot and the robot notices Judy stuck under the ice. It says the iconic phrase, Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, Will Robinson. And Will asks if it can save Judy. The robot melts the ice and pulls Judy out. It even provides the family warmth so that they don't freeze during the night. Flashback to 12 hours earlier, colonists on the Resolute are evacuating into their respective landing ships, called Jupiters, as a siren sounds all around. Maureen assures the Robinsons that this is just a safety procedure and they will soon be back on the main ship. In another section of the ship, the same robot that Will later encounters is killing all the passengers. During the commotion, a suspicious looking woman steals the jacket of a man named Dr. Zachary Smith and uses his ID to get on his designated Jupiter ship. She allows two mechanics to join her. The Jupiter ship launches out, but just then a portal opens in space and sucks in the Resolute and all the evacuating Jupiters. In the present, fake Zachary and the mechanic named Don wake up in their crashed Jupiter, which is dangling off a cliff. They barely make it out alive and discover that the other mechanic died in the crash. Meanwhile, back at the campsite, Maureen marvels over the robot and says that she always knew humans weren't alone in the universe. She points out that the robot is synthetic. It was created, not born. The robot melts the ice and goes in to restart the Jupiter. 
Judy is experiencing PTSD symptoms due to the ordeal she went through. John goes inside the ship to make repairs while the robot dries the entire space. He is suspicious of the robot, even though the rest of the family thinks he is their friend. The Robinsons spend the day getting the ship back in shape to fly again. Judy 3D prints a cast that allows Maureen to walk again. Meanwhile, Penny spots an explosion in the distance, and they realize that there might be other survivors. John and Maureen decide to go check it out, but John doesn't want the robot out of his sight. Since the robot follows Will everywhere, John invites Will to join them on the expedition. Maureen leaves the girls in charge of getting the ship out of water. Meanwhile, Zachary and Don spot heat signatures in the distance as well and decide to venture toward them. They find a woman who they think is dead, but she turns out to be alive but unconscious. Maureen, John, and Will arrive at the crash site of another Jupiter ship, but discover that there are no survivors. Realizing that the ship of the alien robot is nearby, Maureen decides that she wants to learn more about it. John is opposed to this idea, but she doesn't listen. Back at the ship, Penny spots a massive storm brewing in the distance and realizes that she has to warn her parents. She tries to contact them via radio, but they are out of range. She says that they have to take their all-terrain vehicle called the Chariot to go out and rescue them. Judy is the only one who is trained with the vehicle, but she is still suffering from PTSD. Meanwhile, Zachary and Don also spot the storm, and Don picks the unconscious woman up to carry her out of danger. Penny decides that she cannot wait for Judy and ventures out in the chariot herself. Meanwhile, Maureen and John go inside the alien robot ship while Will plays catch with him outside. The ball goes under a piece of the ship and when the robot touches it, it suddenly remembers killing all the people on the Resolute. Will, who is also touching the piece of the ship, connects with the robot and sees the memories as well. Meanwhile, inside the ship, power comes on and Maureen and John find a map indicating where they currently are. They zoom out and discover that they aren't even in the Milky Way. Maureen has no idea how this is possible. The robot stops touching the ship, and as soon as it does, the power goes out. Will runs away from the robot, thinking it is dangerous, but it realizes that even though it was violent before for some reason, it is now friendly and obeys every command that Will gives it, even if the command harms it. He decides to trust it and not tell his parents what he saw. Don and Zachary get caught in the storm and decide to find shelter. Zachary tells Don to stay with the unconscious woman while she goes out into the storm to find help. She tells Don that he can use the last flare they got if he sees any sign of other survivors, and she will return here. Maureen, John, and Will find themselves in the middle of the storm as well, but Penny finally comes within range to contact them on the radio. The robot shines a bright light to let Penny know where they are, and she rescues the three. As they are driving out, Don spots them. He quickly grabs the box with the flare gun. The Robinsons see a flare and head toward it, but instead of Don, they find Zachary, and it is revealed that she stole the flare gun from Don when he wasn't looking. They ask her if there are any other survivors with her, and she lies that she's by herself. The Robinsons return to their ship, racing against the storm, and when they all step out of the chariot, Zachary sees the robot and gets scared. Will assures her that he is not dangerous, but she remembers seeing the robot kill people aboard the Resolute. Lost in Space is an American sci-fi series that ran for three seasons from 2018 to 2021. The series is a remake of the iconic 1965 series of the same name, which introduced the popular line, Danger Will Robinson. The show received mostly positive reviews from fans and critics alike who praised it for its excellent sci-fi production value and its ability to ground it all in a strong emotional storyline with well-rounded characters beautifully portrayed by the actors.